Welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Math Channel. I'm now answering question number 12 from the October 2020 um, International A-Level C12 paper, which actually is corresponding to um, this part of question number 12, which is parts A and B, are corresponding to the P2 papers, which is which are to do solving trig equations. Part C is um, involving P1 topic, which is sketching trig graphs. So um, part C is saved under P1, um, and part A and B are saved under P2 headings. Anyway, so this question here tells us, shows us this figure, um, some graphs, a sketch of the curve with the equation y equals tan x, which is this one over here, okay, um, between 0 and 2 pi x which is 0 and 2 pi, and the curve with the equation y equals 5 cosine x, which is this curve over here, again between 0 and 2 pi. The curves meet at the points A and B as shown in figure 2, show that the x coordinates of points A and B satisfy this equation. All right, so basically the points A and B are the points where these two curves intersect. Okay, and how do you find um, the coordinates of the points where two graphs intersect? Well, we solve them simultaneously. So we have to solve simultaneously the equation y equals the tangent of x and y equals 5 times the cosine of x. So to solve equations simultaneously, we take one equation and substitute instead of y what the other equation is in terms of y. So I can replace the y in this equation with tan x. So I end up with tan x is equal to 5 times cosine x. Now, I want to show that this becomes sine x squared, 5 sine x squared plus sine x minus 5 equals 0. Now, what we can do is you can use some identities to do so. You can use some identities to go ahead and do this. Okay, so the, the two identities that we learn in P2, the two identities that we learn in P2 are, let me just get the pen sorted out again, are that the tangent of x is equal to the sine of x divided by the cosine of x. That's one identity. And the other identity is that the sine squared of an angle x plus the cosine squared of the very same, same angle x is equal to 1. So the sine squared of an angle plus the cosine squared of the same angle equals 1, and the tan of an angle is equal to the sine of that angle over the cosine of that angle. These are two identities that are very, very important for us in not only in P2, but also in P3, P4, and other uh, units. Very important in trigonometry. So what we can do here is to try to make this look like 5 sine squared x plus sine x minus 5. The first thing we could do, really, the only thing we can see that we can do is replace the tan x with sine x over cosine x. So I'm replacing the tan x with sine x divided by cosine x, and that gives me, that's equal to 5 cosine x. Now what we can do is we can multiply both sides by cosine x, in which case you're going to get sine x equals 5 times cosine squared x. Okay, 5 times cosine squared x. Now what we notice here, what we notice here is what we have to show has just sine x's in it. Here I got sine x, here I've got cosine squared x. I can use this identity here to replace the cosine squared x with 1 minus sine squared x. That way I'll have something with just sines in it. So what I can do next is I can say sine x is equal to 5 times, now instead of cosine squared x, I can write, I know that cosine squared x is 1 minus sine squared x, just rearranging this formula, so that cosine squared x can be replaced with 1 minus sine squared of x. Now we have to expand the bracket here, so we have sine x, the sine of x is equal to 5 minus the 5 sine squared of x. Now it's a simple case of just rearranging this and making it say equal zero. So I can add five sine squared x to both sides. So I end up with five sine squared x. I've got the sine x here already, and I can also take away five from both sides, and then I'm left with zero on this side, and that's exactly what we had to show. Five sine squared x plus sine x minus five equals zero. Okay, so we've managed to show that using these two identities, really important identities that we must know. Okay, so there's part A done. And now for part B, um, for part B it says hence find to two decimal places the x-coordinate of A and the x-coordinate of B. Okay, so what we've done so far 
is we have basically in part A we have shown that the coordinates of A and B are given by this equation 5 sine squared x plus sine x minus 5 equals 0. Okay, that's what we're going to um, now solve this equation. So the x coordinate of A and the x coordinate of B are the two, the first two solutions of this equation. This equation was formed as we did just now by basically finding the equation for which these two curves intersect. All right. Now, one thing that we have to realize is that this x-axis, the angles are in radians because it goes up to 2 pi. So that's one thing. So our, our answers must be given in terms of radians. X is in radian measure. It's ra not, not degrees. All right. So we know that for sure it must be in radians. Even if it didn't mention that, the fact that the limits are given in radians okay, means that we should always use radians. If it was in degrees, we'd give the answer in degrees. So we have to give the answer in radians. That's one thing. All right, so now we have to solve this equation. This, uh, this is like a quadratic equation. Now, what some students prefer to do in order to make it a bit more familiar um, when you've got this type of quadratic equation in with a trig ratio is what they do is they, try, they basically say, let, for example, a letter say, let u, let the letter u be equal to sine x. Okay, and if you remember, sine squared x actually means the sine of x all squared. Sine squared x means the sine of x all squared. That's what it means. So what we can do is, so that means that's going to be u squared. So we're going to have 5 u squared plus u minus 5 equals 0. Now, to solve this equation, if we try to factorize, we've, we need to find two numbers that multiply to give you negative 25 and add to give you plus 1. Um, I don't think there will be any numbers that will do that. 5 times 5 is 25. 25 times 1 is 25. Those are the only ways of getting 25. And none of them will give us 1 as a difference. So yeah, there's, no, uh, there's no way to factorize this. So we're going to use the quadratic formula. Okay, the quadratic formula is given by this minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. We could also complete the square, but I'm going to use uh, the formula. So that's for x, and this term, in this case, is for u, because this is our variable u here, all right? So b, a is the coefficient of the squared term, which is 5, and um, b is the coefficient of the term that isn't squared just by itself, it's, it's 1u, and c is negative 5, the constant. So we can say that the, the different values of u will be given by minus b minus 1, plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is 1 squared, which is 1, minus 4, times a, which is 5, times c, which is minus 5, over 2 times a, which is 2 times 5. So we can say that u is going to be minus 1. That's going to be plus or minus the square root of. This gives you 1 plus, because you've got, this is 20 times 5, which is 100. 1 plus 100 is 101 over 10. Okay, just to... Be sure we can actually try to uh, solve this. Um, just put this in the calculator to make sure we haven't made a silly mistake. Minus 1. I'll use plus the square root of um, 1 minus 4 times 5 times minus 5. All over 10. Uh, 2 times 5, which is 10. That's no problem. So that gives us minus 1 plus or minus the square root of 101 over 10. Okay, so there's the value or the values of u. Okay, so now um, that means sine x is equal to this value, which is minus 1 plus or minus the square root of 101 over 10, or sine x is equal to minus 1, sorry, this is plus, one of them will be plus and the other one will be minus. Okay, this is plus 101, minus 1 minus the root of 101 over 10. Now, it looks like this is going to have a value that is not going to give us a solution. Okay, because if you put, if I change this here to a minus, if I change this to a minus, the value we're going to get there is going to be minus 1.1. Okay? okay, so this, therefore, we can say x, for this there will be no solution. Because for the sine curve, the sine curve, its maximum is 1, its minimum is minus 1. Okay, it doesn't go above 1, it doesn't go below minus 1. So this is below minus 1. Okay, so therefore this has no solution because it has a value of negative 
negative 1.104 negative 1.104 so it, it's it's going to be below its its lowest value all right so that has no solution but this one i think it will so let's take this um let's put a plus there all right so this gives us a value we can see it's going to have a solution it's less than one between minus one and one it should be okay so if i press inverse sine of the last answer that's going to give us 1.131 okay so x equals 1.13135 yeah okay all right so that's going to be the first solution that's going to be the first positive solution of this that's going to be over here and the second solution is going to be found um, for the sine curve how do we find the second solution well for the sine curve the first solution is given by the calculator which is the one that we just found now okay um, this is the angle in radians and the second solution is found from the symmetry of the sine curve it's going to be over here okay so um, from the sine curve if this is we know this is pi or 180 180 or pi minus the angle the calculator gave will be the second solution for sine curve you get the calculator solution and you always have 180 or pi radians minus the calculator solution and that gives you the other main solution so if i do pi minus this so pi minus my last answer that will give me 2.0102 2.0102 which is pi minus 1.3 1.13135 that gives us a second solution so these are the two solutions so the x coordinate of a is going to be equal to 1.13 to two decimal places and the x coordinate of b is going to be 2.01 to two decimal places that's how they wanted us to have they only wanted the x coordinate of a and the x coordinate of b so that's what we found there and we have the answer to this question okay so for the sine curve okay what we've just done here some of you they prefer to use quadrants uh, i get some messages saying can't we use quadrants of course we can use quadrants i personally prefer to just use the symmetry of the sine curve and the cosine curve and the tan curve to, to solve these problems but if you want to use quadrants you can i'll just show you how that works the first solution we got we we found the sine of a positive ratio and it gave us an angle which was in the first quadrant which was um, the angle we just oops the angle we just found gave us this angle here this to say was a 1.13 in radians okay 1.13 now this is pi radians now for the sign the sign is positive remember a s t c all right awful stc so it's positive in these two quadrants so the other place where the sine curve will give you a positive value is over here and remember we're trying to find what this angle is that angle now remember that, that this angle is equal to pi minus this angle here, which is the associated acute angle, which is 1.13. So it's, it's going to be pi minus 1.13 as I did. And that gives you the second angle, which is 2.0102. Okay, where does this AC, ASTC come from? It comes from the curve, actually, because we can see that the sine curve is positive in the first quadrant means up to 90 degrees. And then also in the second quadrant up to pi. And then it's negative between pi and 2 pi. Okay, and then it follows that same pattern again and again. So if we had to find other solutions, for example, if we wanted to find solutions down here, we would then continue on and say, okay, 2 pi away from here will be another solution. And 2 pi away from here would be another solution because the sine curve as a, and, and the cosine curve as well, they repeat every 360 degrees. Now I'm going to make another video la later on, um, which will go through them in a bit more detail. I've done a few before as well, but I'll make one soon as well. The next question I get which is suitable, where well, I'll go through also the cosine and the tan um, methods and how to find different angles, just to make that clear. All right, so there's the answer for this question, part B. Part C is in a separate video, which is uh, more, it's got like labeled under P1, because it's to do with the sketching of the curves and finding the uh, solutions from the sketches, rather than algebraically and trig equations. That's more P1, so I've saved it in a separate video. Um, other questions from this particular paper, C12 October 2020 can be found in the video that, uh, sorry, in the playlist that links that is linked over here. Other questions from uh, the topic of trigonometry from P2, trig equations can be found in the uh, link that is 
over here you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link and i will put a link to question 12 part c um over here um the last part of the question which as i said is linked to p1 so thank you for watching also check the description of the video to see links to other material you might find useful um see you soon